Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. All right. Thank you, Mr. Producer. Guys, you love uh, the Michelle Dickey show, and that's who I am joined with uh, right now, uh, the one and only Miss Michelle Dickey. Hey, Michelle, how are you? Always nice to see you. Yeah. Hi, Casey. Same here. Doing well. How about yourself? Pretty good. Thank you. Um, I, I know you're doing so much work. Uh, helping people uh, deal with, uh, uh, you know, the uh, uh, abuse and life afterwards. But uh, in case people never heard your show before, can you kind of bring us into uh, your world and and how you're helping people and um, what um, the, the 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 coaching, the counseling, uh, um, and uh, uh, heightened awareness, the the, uh, the consulting for heightened awareness? Tell us about that, please. Uh, yeah, real quick. Yes, Consulting for Heightened Awareness is a non-denominational ministry where we specialize in narcissistic abuse and trauma recovery, you know, helping survivors of abuse overcome the trauma associated with the abuse. And then anyone who is still trying to overcome trauma triggers, because trauma triggers, once we realize that they're always going to be external, like we'll figure out where they're coming from, then we can go, ah, okay. And we know it's not coming from within. So that helps to heal and to overcome those. Okay. And to, to, to get that emotional regulation and knowing when it, it's not coming from us, you know, uh-huh. all part of that, that, that inner work and stuff that we have to do post abuse or post any uh, traumatic event. So it takes a little while. It doesn't and happen so, overnight, right? Exactly. Yeah, it does not. I know we all want it to at first. <laughs> We're like, "Ooh, make it go away," but <laughs> right, right, right. I got it, it doesn't. It yeah, does not work that way. Uh, so that's what that's what I'm here for as a uh, consultant, to coach, a trauma specialist. As I help the survive, I got help guide them and support them every step of the way. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we've got the ind- and the individual session for those who haven't heard it and those who need a reminder, all of our individual consulting sessions are for any combination of up to two people. OK, so that's out there for that. And then, of course, we have a group session for those when they're ready, because mm-hmm. all of us at first, we're not ready to be in a group setting. So it takes a little while to work up to that. Right. But once they're ready, we have group sessions every week as well with you know no more than five people with me at six that way keep it small everybody gets a turn and you know to share what they want to share support each other that kind of thing I, and I then bet course, a lot of a lot of bonds uh develop in 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 that because everyone's gone through some something somewhat similar i bet uh it's good for camaraderie and uh, not, not feeling alone maybe exactly exactly we're real big on you know reminding people that you know, you're not alone. And I, I let the viewers on the YouTube channel know that a lot too. I'll share something that I have gone through or am going through at the same time along with them because it is a journey. Okay. And so, you know, they're, they, they're on this journey with myself and others. You know, we're not alone. We might be scattered about right. out there, yeah. but we're not alone. And then, of course, I remind people often too that when you – or with the Godhead, the God spirit in you, you're never alone, no matter where you go. He's because he's all we realize this. He's always been there to protect us the whole time. I mean, after all, you know, we, we made it out as, as tough as it might have been, you know, we made it out. We're still here, we're still standing. So we realize that you know what, how you know, because there's a lot of uh moments in some abusive situations that we often sit back and go how did I make it out of that? Yeah. You know? So yeah. then we realize we, we, now we know. And, and we're like, because of God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let, let, let me ask you, let me ask you this too, uh, Michelle. I'm, I'm sure um, people ha- have, have come to you and uh, is it common to blame God sometimes in the, in the throes of this when it's new? Or what do you say to someone like that? Yeah. I, it, that, it, good that you brought that up because i just had a fellow warrior who caught himself uh in uh, doing that and i have a video over on the youtube channel about that as well i touched on it because you know god is not to blame right uh we have to overcome that because we we got to realize that all of that you know a lot of the 
you know, we don't do the abuse to ourselves. No, but we didn't know that's what was happening when it was happening. And so God knew that too. And so we just, we had to learn the lessons. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I, I, I often refer to it as, you know, the whole time, you know, when God awakens us to what's going on around us, that it's the abuse. And it's like, you know what? It's because he's seen enough yeah. himself. And so that's why he's like, okay. And, and not only that, it's the fact that once we learn the lesson, you know, that's the thing. I, I say God is a teacher, okay? Not necessarily a tester, but a teacher. We got to go through this stuff and we have to learn about it first, right? It's like with anything. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, we got to learn how to read. We got to learn how to write. We got to learn how to brush our teeth, all that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Same thing. Same thing. We have to learn about the abuse before we even can start to overcome it. Okay. It's, but it's totally doable. And so we realize that. But we do. Uh, I, myself, and several of them have never done that. I've never blown. You question God. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So there's a difference between those two, right? There's a difference. Yes, we've questioned him, mm -hmm. but never, I never, myself and stuff, we never blamed him for anything that might have gone wrong or whatever. We're like, okay, Heavenly Father, why? Okay, what, what, what's, what's going on here? You know, that kind of thing. I see. But a lot, a lot of times, you know, people can get tripped up into blaming God when, no, God was waiting a long time for us to come back home to him mm. when you stop and think about it he that's why i say he's the most patient god god is a god of patience i mean when you think about it, like when he woke me up i was 38 at the time and i thought wow 38 long years he waited for me to come home yeah, you, you saw this for 30 years you were watching this for 38 <laughs> that's patience Oh yeah, that that really like you know, when that sinks in, you realize just how patient he is. It's like yeah. okay, wow, oh. you know, and how can you not be thankful for that? Oh, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> it is. It really truly is. And then you know he's been, he he's been with you the whole time because he loves you. Mm -hmm. And so the enemy wants to trick people into thinking that God doesn't love them, and that's not true. He loves them very much, or he wouldn't be protecting them while teaching them and once we learn the lesson then it's like oh that's the light bulb moments the aha happen. moment right yeah yeah exactly <laughs> so 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 uh, with someone uh, especially new in their faith um and ha has that mindset uh, the questioning might turn into maybe a a, a blame um do you is it the be is the the course kind of to to sit them down and to have what you were just saying to me and just talking talking it out uh and then making oh, yeah. them understand that is that kind of how that works i would is it common yeah well i mean it is it's, it is a common thing you know um and and nobody needs to beat themselves up over it <laughs> we tell them don't beat yourself up you know it, it you're not alone a lot of people do it until yeah. they can grasp uh, uh the understand you know understanding uh, how he works, how God works. And God. so that's why you know, I break a lot of all of that down in on the YouTube channel. By the way, for those who don't know, the title is called Narcissism and Cognitive Dissonance over there on YouTube. And I'm, I've got stuff coming out all the time, every day. <laughs> on on so, YouTube. And if we, if we type in uh, Michelle Dickey, can we get there too? Uh, you know what? I'm not entirely sure. You might, but because of the channel name is narcissism cognitive dissonance i think okay. it'll come up better that way okay all right because uh, right. i don't have my yeah because i don't have my I, even though my name is on the account it's not in the channel title so that and i'm not the only one with that name <laughs> oh, right 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 okay well well i understand um that uh there's there's something that's very important i i hope uh you can uh talk to us about i uh, there was a, a survivor that you were working with and uh, something and, and, and something came up that, that we can take a, a page from. Can you uh, talk to us? Yes, about that? absolutely. Uh, you know, it, it, when you're first coming into finding your voice again, post abuse, you, you, you found a place wherever it might be on, a, let's say, social media. OK, you found a place and like Quora it, for uh, many of us, that's where it all starts. It's where the questions uh, are, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just to kind of get get back into the mode, and so she, you know, one of the subscribers who's finding her voice again, and is very talented, by the way, as a writer. 
and find, because a lot of us do, you know, we find writing to be very therapeutic and it helps us to, to heal. Uh-huh. And so, uh, and a nasty, negative, gaslight, verbal attack shows up in the comments. Uh-huh. And that's, I say that's the trick of the enemy, trying to get in the way and thwart the survivor off of God's healing path. And so I, I'm, I'm here for anyone who might need this help too as well to steer you back. To don't let the enemy do that. And so I, you know, if the capability is available on that particular site, disable the comments for a little while, How whatever you got to do so that you can continue to do that because you, you know, the survivor knows how they're, how they're doing inside. The survivor knows how they're feeling and how, how they're progressing. You know, they can, maybe they don't always see it, but they can, they can sense that they are moving in the right direction and that they are healing a little bit more each day. And by doing writing or, you know, interacting with other survivors who are true survivors, by the way, that discernment, and so they find that to be very, whatever, whatever the survivor finds to be therapeutic, whatever place, you know, wherever it is. Yeah. Okay. The yeah. survivor will know what's working for them. And so the enemy will do that though. Try to, because I tell people a lot, like after all, you know, the, the devil does not want people to heal, mm-hmm. but God wants people to heal. Yeah. So when the survivor knows, can sense that they are making progress and things like that, and the enemy's watching, and the enemy can tell too. So he'll send one of his little, what we, we call the flying monkey narcs. Oh, he'll oh. send one and, and dish out a gaslight or a verbal attack or whatever in the comments. And, you know, that can, if we let it, yeah. that can shut that, you know, shut that down for us. And then we're back to what? You know, we we don't continue to make progress, and we don't want to see anyone do that. Right. We don't want to see anyone let no, no, because we all got haters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just <don't, laughs> think about it. If we didn't have haters, then that means we're not doing something right. Right. <laughs> well, so are you saying, Michelle? Are you saying it's probably a good idea, maybe, uh, if you're getting back into social media after uh, dealing with uh, an abuser, and you're on a track, uh, you know, working with you and getting yourself back. Is it a good idea to turn those comments off maybe for a couple of weeks until you're a little. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. OK, there's nothing wrong with that, because, you know, even though there are those of us who try to stay on top of keeping the garbage out, not because of a, it, it. We overcame that long time ago. So that's why I want to be here. Inspiration for others who have still uh, we call that a trigger. Okay. okay. And you okay. see how that trigger is external because it came from somebody else that was dishing out the gaslight and it would trigger. Okay. okay. It's external. It didn't come from the survivor, her, you know, herself. So that's a good example on what I mean by the triggers are always going to be external. Yeah. It's very important to know that, right? Uh, it's, it's not, it's n- nothing wrong with the, the person. It's just some who's mean, uh, another predator. Exactly. Remember, because we operate on the salutogenic approach, because the uh, other side of that is uh, a lot of people operate with the pathogenesis approach, which is the one that focuses on the what's wrong with you. Uh, Uh -uh, We don't. Yeah, we don't do that. That that will re-traumatize. That's what the triggers are meant to do is to re-traumatize. Gotcha. Once we once we have a really good understanding that there always going to be something external that's a trigger. That helps us to overcome that a lot quicker. And so we get to that point where, okay, you know what? Gonna have people, you know, we've got people out there that are just miserable people. Yeah. And so it, 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 I know it sucks, but you know, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. And we just learn to ignore them because what they're looking for, big, first and foremost, is to start an argument and try, and they're trying to deliberately get under our skin, that poking and prodding trying to get a negative reaction because they can see you know it's like it's like the enemy can see it. it's a really crazy thing but he can see how we're progressing as well mm-hmm. and he doesn't like it so he gonna... don't want you to get better right exactly i mean after all when we stop and think about the abusers the narcissistic abusers and how they ne- they could not stand to see us happy <laughs> they could not stand to see us you know uh accomplishing things mm-hmm. you know they couldn't stand it they hated it they would always try to g- 
gaslight, you know, come out with those backhanded compliments or something like that, trying to, you know, like, let's say we got ourselves a certification in something, you know, and we're like, hey, you know, we're happy about that. You know, it's like, we're not overly prideful with it, but we're just like, hey, you know what? Cool. We did something. Yeah, you know, that's a, a, a validation for ourselves. Yeah. You know, we're like, yay, we made it, you know, mm -hmm. but the narc abuser would try to slap it down and, you know, it's like really, you know, and many of us have experienced that. So if anybody is experiencing that, hang tight. You know, we just, we learn if we have to still interact with one that I would refer to as at least a part-timer, because that there is a thing. You've mm -hmm. got the full-blown narcissistic abusers that would be considered what many refer to as the overt type. Like, you know, you see them where they're out there. You can tell a real bully, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. You, you, can, you see what, that's the full-blown. Okay. The part-time ones are what most refer to as the covert a wolf in sheep's clothing type thing yes okay. exactly yes very much like like out in the i mean we learned to see when they are doing it in public too because we learned that the actual love bombing itself that excessive flattery that is the, that is abuse uh -huh. it's just it's it i i don't want to say it's nice abuse because no abuse is nice right. but the love bomb starts the trauma bonding process uh, so you see that yeah that leads up to that devaluing and then the discard phase and then you know they try to hoover and all of that you, you told me that they'll even try and uh get you apart from your family and, and your friends so you're just completely dependent on them like not put your name yeah. on things or you were telling me that one time i was like yeah that's exactly mm -hmm, that's exactly what they want to do and yeah, it's not just to isolate you from family, but, you know, I just a little bit ago when it revealed it to me, I thought to myself, I said, you know, because when we get out out of all of that and, and we see that there's a really big world out there, so much more than what we ever knew. And that's because when we were in the narcissistic abuse situation, they kept us in like a bubble. Right. So it's not only did they try, you know, try, they'll try to isolate from family and, and any support network. They are also isolating us from the world. Yeah, that's so cruel. Yeah, it's so like, cruel. Wow. Because then we are out here, and then now we've got to, you know, we got to figure that we have to take it all in, <laughs> you know, and take yeah. it all in and go, oh my goodness. Okay. And then, you know, and after that, a lot of survivors will tend to think that, that everybody out there is all bad and mm -hmm. they're not. Is so that's the other thing we gotta you know overcome as well. It's part, it's part of the healing process. Yeah, so it's just part of it, and that's natural to to feel that way for a, a little while. Yeah, it is. It because I myself included, I, I was like, are there any good ones left? Right, <laughs> right. No, I, you know, I get it. it. Mm -hmm. It's now, natural, natural part of the process. Um. Now, um. T tell me, tell me about how important it is during the process to stay positive. Uh, in your thinking can you talk about uh, that yes absolutely because one thing that another well i wouldn't say one thing but another thing how about that okay <laughs> that, that we learn uh about the narcissistic abusers and the abuse and their the way they think and i could share a brief example because several of the case studies i remember them doing this they would always make statements you know negative statements obviously but they were always statements about, oh, this never, uh, every time I try to do this, that never works out. Like, it's like they're going around expecting the worst mm. and then it happens. And I'm like, well, that's why it happens because you're going around expecting. I said, if you are expecting the worst, and I remember before I knew that he was the, the psychopath type right. narc, <laughs> before <laughs> I knew that, I told him, I said, well, if you keep, going around every corner looking for the worst you're gonna find it oh he didn't like that you didn't like that no i bet not no he oh. didn't like that huh <laughs> right right and so but that's what they'll do and so a lot of time we also through stages of life had gotten tricked into doing that unknowingly you know because mm -hmm. when you're around that kind of thinking and that kind of behavior for a period of time you know, as sociology, psychology, it's very true that social influence, you know, it's just, you know, uh, it's like how God also tells us, you know, it's like being careful who we associate with lest we become like them because it's very true. Yeah, <laughs> it oh, can yeah. happen. 
if oh. we're not aware. Right. If we're not aware, if we are aware, then we, we can pretty much go, okay, we stay aware. We're like not going to become like them. <laughs> right. know, that's sure. your, that's a, 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 a good defense right there is to have that knowledge. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and, and I just remember that. And so we changed that thinking. That's all part of the process. Also, the learning how to turn negatives into positive. Mm. You know, that really, I remember somebody put a meme out. I don't remember who the or original author is of it, but it's so true. It says that those who figure out how to turn negative into positive have figured out the meaning of life. And I thought, oh, in its simplicity, that makes sense. Yeah, it when does. <laughs> you know, uh, and it's so true. So we start to learn how to do that. And one big way that I have uh, suggested to many is that, okay, so something that we we, we believe to have been, uh, uh, I wouldn't call it bad, but just like a, a negative experience. Okay. And we go, okay, you know what? All right, so that didn't work out quite the way we were hoping for it to because once we get past all that and we're in what i refer to as god's reality okay the upright position okay uh we realize that we don't have any expectation <laughs> like that it was like we got to because we're gonna self-disappoint when we have those okay we learned that but what we were how we were hoping it would turn out right uh -huh. so because it didn't turn out it's like okay, all right let's take a step back Say that God downloaded something for us to work on a project and it didn't quite work out the way that we were hoping. And then I was like myself, I step back and I'll go, okay, Heavenly Father, I, so that didn't work the way I was hoping. Help me figure out what I need to be doing differently. Mm. What do I need to change? Because the project itself is given to us, you know, by our, our, you know, our creative juices, just where you know, so God downloads that stuff. Right, right. And yeah, so well, like I, you gave this to me for a reason. I'm supposed to do something with it, but apparently, I got, I got a, I got a fine tune and tweak. How, how do I change this up a little bit? You know, what do I do differently? That's turning a negative into a positive. Staying with it and go, okay, let's try this. Yeah, and you know, sometimes you gotta try several different things to to see where see where it goes and, yeah. and what actually works and it's like i say for a lot of people when they're looking for their purpose it's like you, you'll know because it'll kind of like it'll fit like a hand in glove kind of thing like anything that is meant to go along with us in our purpose on our journey and uh our calling yeah that it will not come as overwhelming or a burden or chaotic it will come with ease it will come with calmness it will come with some direction instruction. God's patience and that <laughs> absolutely nice. you know we're big on that <laughs> yeah no no i i i, I uh, hey, i'm with you um uh michelle dickey uh always love when you you come on tell me what's going on um um uh, at the uh the uh, with the academy uh and what's happening uh, what do you what do you got um on the forefront is basically what i'm asking uh, yeah, yeah, we've got this uh, Consulting for Heightened Awareness, CHA Academy, and uh, it's, we're going to be coming out with more stuff, obviously, but right now we have a course up that is all about how the trauma bond is formed, because there's a lot of people, we all talk about it, that the trauma bond is like a drug addiction, okay, but what does that mean, you know, I mean, yeah. what, is that tell that's not telling us with some basic, simple scientific facts, like, okay, so what's that mean, it's like a drug, we get that part. Because it's very, you know, it's, it takes a while to break the uh, uh, addiction to the abuser, you know, because that's essentially what happened during the trauma bonding process. Mm -hmm. And so to get a really, you know, good, simple understanding, what we've done is I've taken biblical truth, you know, God's word and basic, simple scientific facts that pertain solely to the trauma bond and how it's like a drug addiction. That's it. We're, we keep it simple. I don't bog people down with overly sophisticated, unnecessary words. We keep it, you know, to the point. Here's what was happening with dopamine and norepinephrine, how the ego plays a role. Wow. And then also, yeah, I've also got a chapter. You really get in there deep. Wow. Mm -hmm, yep, that. And then uh, how the overinflated ego actually opens portals for unclean spirit, all the abusive behavior. And so I've got that in there as well. And is then that would, other... it, would that be a trigger? Would that be considered a trigger? 
Yeah, you know what? In a way, yeah, yeah. it could be. Yeah, because we're yeah we it's all we have to we have to kind of it's not really an ego death, but we do have to learn to let it go. Uh -huh. I <laughs> you see. Know, let it, it's part of it's supposed to be part of our growing and maturing process. Uh. To, we're not better than anybody else. You know, everybody's got different talent and gifts and things like that. Some people are better cooks than I am, sure, but we're still people. We're still humans, you know, right, right. like we might have different, you know, we all have different callings and different gifts and stuff, but yeah. we're all still people, we're all still God's people. Oh, yeah. You know? So yeah. We, we're not we're not to develop that high minded because that's what uh, the overinflated ego will do is it can trick a person into developing that high mindedness that God says, no, no, <laughs> we're right. not supposed to have that. Yeah. And so um, that's what we've done with, with that course. And it's, it's ready. And everybody gets a certificate of completion at the end. This is not, it's not a, uh, the, the pop quizzes are fun. They're not graded. They're for <laughs> the learner to go and enjoy and test their own knowledge. And they get a copy of the BTBW PDF download, uh, the magazine, volume one. They'll, once they enroll in the course, they get that. And then they'll have access to PDF notes and references for where the information came from. Mm -hmm. And stuff like that's real simple. It's nothing complex. But it, it's a you know fun and with more of God's word and some basic scientific facts to help them understand what was happening in the brain and the body during the trauma bond to wow. the abuser. Wow. So yeah, because it helps to break the addiction to the abuser. So you gotta understand what was going on before exactly. you can get I say and you help people get uh michelle dickie you're uh, such a great guest and you're helping so many people you know i'm a huge fan um uh, we're out of time here but um let me give you the last word uh, anything you want uh, us to think about to leave us with and then please once again tell us how to get a hold of you so people can uh, get involved in the awesome work that you're doing yeah absolutely just final thought for everybody a little inspiration and encouragement is that if you find yourself surrounded by a bunch of people that are out there doing nothing but complaining complaining that's negativity so you can distance yourself from that so you can keep your head clear and stay focused on your work and whatever god got you working on you can always reach me at 704-245-4340 or email michelle.dickey at cdhrwdrmd.org. Sending love and light to all fellow warriors. Thank you for listening, watching, and for your support. Until next time, show some gratitude to the Heavenly Father. And you keep being you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The great Michelle Dickey. Thank you so much. I can't wait to hear from you again. Be right back, guys. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.